You dag him right. It is Mr. Way. You call me Mr. Way. <laughs> you said the characters, but did you tell everybody which character you were or not? Yep, we, we won, so it was all worth it. I had a killer wedgie, but it was all worth it. Like his friends. He's like, hey, what team does your dad play for? Yeah. And Bree, Bree will be like, buddy, that's, that's not how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, season three, episode three. Now, I understand that this is both a audio and visual podcast. This is one of the rare circumstances where I would like to recommend everybody just listen to this podcast or maybe whenever this gentleman, our guest today is speaking, you could just close your eyes because I would prefer this man to read my kids, their bedtime stories over myself. Our guest today tied in Logan Thomas. Logan, what's up, dude? What's up, man? Appreciate you having me. And hear that? I, I appreciate the, the comment about the voice. Uh, it is, I mean, just butter. Personally, listening to it, I hate it. <laughs> I cannot stand it. But you know, to each their own. When uh, when did the voice kick in? Do you remember? Yeah, it was eighth grade, and I didn't. Oh have, my god! I didn't have a switch from like the little cracks in the voice or the squeaks. In you the just voice. woke up and what's up? It was, yeah, it was from <laughs> high pitch to this. At 5'10", you know, yep. or maybe 5'10", yep. like 140 pounds soaking wet. Yep. I know I'm voice. putting you on the spot. Round about how long have you and Brandy been together? So about nine years. About all nine together, years. married for seven. Does she still love talking to you on the phone? I think so. Yeah. It seems so, at least. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think, think years down now. the road, I'll just text you and I'll be like, hey, man, call me. I'm not going to answer, but just leave me a voicemail. You know what? I'll do you one better. Every time you text me, I'll just respond with a voice memo. My man. See, <laughs> you've had friends do this before, haven't they? I have not. This is the first, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> well, dude, as you remember, we talk a little ball. We talk a little life. I'd like to do a little life first, though. How are you feeling? I feel okay. Yeah. You know, after a game, a little banged up, a little yes. sore. Uh, obviously didn't go the way we wanted to yes. so mentally a little sore in that way yes too. but uh all in all at age 32 you know it's uh i'm doing all right so i do know in terms of the age thing in terms of the contact i do not know now i've been i've been hit a couple of times but not a couple of times per play like you typically are yeah i just wish i could lord that over my kids i'm not saying that you will but i wish that like i wish that i could have visual evidence of how tough I was to my kids to be like, you want to talk to me? Look at that. Look at me just getting <laughs> tackled right there. And I get up and I go again. You said not that I will to my kids or not that I do to my kids because they're in sports right now too. So do you so do when that? they complain, I'm like, no, no, yeah. watch this. Why don't you get hit by a Coke machine with legs? Why don't you try that on for size? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. These guys aren't small. Most yeah. of them are bigger than I am, Yeah, <laughs> which is crazy because I'm a fairly large individual. You are. That's what I was going to say. We, I think we've had the double seater in here before, but if anything, we had to make sure the double seater was in here just for you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. the leg space. And maybe if we got to move the pumpkin a little bit, then, you know, we could do that. No, I like the pumpkin. The pumpkin's yeah. cute. Yeah. But all right. So anyways, we'll start with a, a couple of our highlights for the day now we talk about terry a lot on the show because terry has a lot of highlights yeah. the catches that this dude makes but i also want to come in on now for those of you that took my word and you're just listening just take our word for it it's the play down the sideline terry makes a big catch and then gets smoked you just mentioned you're a large individual the confidence that you have going into like a scrum or people talking trash whenever you see a guy get hit and now we've got Nick Gates in the mix. And Nick, I would take Nick in any dark alley on my side anytime <laughs> ever. What goes through your mind? One, Mac making a big play. And two, whenever you see the division crab, the big, not, I wouldn't say necessarily a cheap shot, but that is, he got smoked like defenseless receiver kind of thing. Yeah, I think first thing that comes to my mind is you got to be a different type of individual when you play this game. Gosh. You got to be a little bit. You know, a little bit crazy to be able to play this game. But Just a little bit. It's one of those things that's been ingrained in you as a kid. Yeah. Like, you make the play no matter what. Whatever happens, happens. And then in football, you know the consequences a lot of the time. Gosh, and, uh, man. But, Mac, yeah, he's he's special, man. Uh, I still don't think he gets the credit he deserves. But, uh, yeah, heck of a play. You know you're about to take a hit. So it's catch, brace, hold on for dear life. Yes. And, Talk your trash when you get up after yes. you make a big play. I think that, like, right here at the end of the play, like, Terry gets up and how he stands, how he talks, how he walks. I think that if you were to have, like, a side-by-side -side of him, like this clip, him and then how he is just every day around the building, 
and you just played them simultaneously, I don't think people would understand that it's just two different dudes. Yeah, two completely different human beings. Game day Terry and six days a week Terry. Oh two man, different smile. People. Hey, how you doing? Like, yeah. he'll ask about the kids. Hey, what's going on? And then you see him out there and he's just ready to freaking punch somebody in the throat. Yeah, football yeah. creates different animals. That's man. right, man. And then uh, my friend as a, dude, when was the last time you were on the punt team? Ooh, you have a ballpark year? 2019, the year before Detroit? I got here. Yep. Detroit PP, right? You're PP a and guard. Tackle, yep. slot. Played it all. Yeah. <laughs> Just on the Went line. All the way down the line, yeah. The uh so I feel like you'll be able to relive the glory days a little bit of on teams. Absolutely. Dude, yesterday, like a lot of people were talking to me about the punts. Pre-game, winds blowing all over the place. And I kind of looked at the fellas. I was like, boys, I think it's going to be tough to catch. I'm just going to try and launch it. I'm not sure where it's going to go, though, but let's just see what we can make happen. Whenever we have been fortunate enough to have some of these turnovers, like with the punt team, the celebration that takes place. Were you ever a part of one? Absolutely. All it the is time. the best, dude. It's the best. I so, remember. So, like, random. So unexpected. And, yep. yeah. It's just a routine thing. Okay, fourth down punt. Boom. Oh, Fair ball's hit. back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, made a, they made a play. Somebody <laughs> made a mistake. And... <laughs> For us, my my most memorable one, we played in Philly when I was in in 2019 when I was in Detroit, and we ended up beating Philly that week. We took a kickoff back, and it was like not well blocked. Yep. Agnew made a big cut, hit Agnew, the scene, dude. and took it to the house. And yes. it was just one of those things. It's like well, that was completely unexpected, but we'll take it. Yeah. Because we had four guys lose their block. Yeah. The uh, the crazy thing I was thinking about it like whenever I was watching film today. Eric Gray and Shep, Sterling Shepard, they both played at OU. And it's it's just it's crazy like how careers progress and like you're like you're playing against guys so you had the same alma mater or Shepard and I were teammates and things like that. And then you just get out there and like you said, it just it creates a there is something to the emotion like of a game and football, like I don't know. But anyway, yeah, it's unmatched. I mean, anything can happen at any moment. I know. Especially on teams in a windy environment. Yeah. Yeah. How uh how do you hold up joints wise after the old Met life? I know it's kind of got some uh, it's got some reputations out there. Do you ever notice a difference? It does have a reputation, but they did change the turf, and the turf is better than it oh has okay. Been in the past. I didn't even realize um, that. It it wasn't the turf wasn't terrible. Yeah, uh, it's just playing in those conditions too, where it's a little bit brisk, <sighs> winds blowing a little yes. bit. And then you're playing against the NFC East team that's physical. Yeah, and every single one of those NFC games, right, East games. It's going to be a physical game, and you kind of leave this, every one of them feeling the same way. Yeah. What, uh, what would it take um, from me to you to get you out there to be on our punt team or rep or even a game? Uh, you know, I'm not opposed to it. All right. I'm not opposed to it. I mean, I've done it. It's what I made my career on uh, originally to be able to stick around in this league and then get my opportunity to play. So, so if the if, number if was push called, came to in. shove and Nate called me up and was like, hey, I need you on punt this week, I said, I got you. That is documented, so now we are good if it's ever. And I don't doubt it. I do believe it. Right. Not only just because of how smooth your voice sounds when you say it, but the way you looked at me when you said it. I'm like, this dude's telling the truth. Yeah, block the three, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> a, that's right. Yep, no doubt. All right, man. So this is a new segment, I believe, that you did not get to partake in the last time. Okay. This is called You Posted That, presented by Zoomf. And my friend, something's going to flash up on the screen. And we're just going to react. Perfect. Now, for those that took my advice and are just listening to this episode, you could probably you could probably fast forward for the next three to four minutes unless you're just super interested or you want to hear Logan talk more or if you would like to hear me talk more. But let's get on with you posted that, man. Okay. <laughs> That's a hot start. I like it. So this is one of my best friends from college. His name's Joey Racer. He was just a regular student and ended up walking on to the basketball team. Um, he was in my wedding. Good friend of mine. He was actually in Atlanta when we were down there, so I got to see him. How come he's not doing the stank face? That's uh, that's natural, Joey, and his uh, <laughs> his, his natural. I feel like there. I know everything about that dude. I need to know from that one pick. Yeah, right he's, there. he's lightning in a bottle, man. I he's, was about uh, to say that does not seem like he would be a bad hang by any means. He no, seems like a good time. Oh my goodness! I don't know that that's me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's not me. That might be Cole. <laughs> no for real that's not me no i know <laughs> you're right it is cole so it could be anybody could be me could be uh, you it's okay. just hey you posted that so we okay i'm gonna go <laughs> you're with... thinking oh it's another tight end i mean i mean it, the similarities are pretty close why though, is right? he scared of the picture 
I mean, guy was born in 2000 or something like that. I mean, you know these kids nowadays. Is that an iPod Touch? That's not even an iPhone, maybe. Yeah, zoom in a little bit more. That that's iPod Touch or iPod or iPhone three, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it looks like. Coleman, dude, great kid, love him. I like great Coleman. hair, great hair, great hair. Works his butt off too. Yeah, I like Coleman. Goofball, one of the funniest people. I've He's ever a been funny around. guy. There he is. He's very quiet until you really get to know him, and then he lets it all out. <laughs> That's why our tighter room is so fun. Our tighter room is real fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, my yes. goodness. Absolutely. Nacho. Best Halloween costume of that year, for sure. Nacho. Uh, his wife actually made that. Keegan, there on the left, made John Bates' costume. She made that? She made that, yeah. And, uh, yeah, he uh, he was ready to go that night. That was a blast. We had a good time. Did uh, How many of the young players actually knew who he was? I'd say most would know. I mean, it's yeah. a fairly. Because when Bree and I came to your place and we were squinting, squinting Wendy Peppercorn, uh, a lot of the young guys had never seen the Sandlot. Yeah, that's bad. That's a travesty. Yeah, I mean, not that I would talk to their parents, but their parents need to put them on the <laughs> for sure. My kids have watched it multiple times. Multiple times, <laughs> man. It's too good. Yeah, it's too good. It's a that's a I, that's a good that's a good shot of Bates. I wonder if he posted that one. He must have posted that one. Somebody must have posted that Somebody one. Somebody posted it. <laughs> Could have been me. <laughs> um, you got any Halloween plans this year for your costume? Or is it a secret? We haven't fully decided on what it is. We're, we're narrowed You have down plenty of time. Yeah. Well, you know, Brandy, you know, she likes to make her stuff anyway. So <laughs> we'll figure something out. It, yeah. We'll be here by Monday. I think that, uh, so my Breeze, so Breeze, younger sister and her husband, Colin and Carissa, they're in town with their kids. Nice. And then my mother and father-in-law are coming in town. Nice. And I think we are going to do three different Tom Hanks with the matching. So I, like I think that. I'm going to go as Jimmy from A League of Their Own. And nice. Bree may be one of the Rockford Peaches. Yep. My cousin Colin is going to be Castaway Tom Hanks. Carissa is going to be the ball. Okay. And then I think we're going to go Forrest Gump and Jenny for the in-laws. Like it. Should be good. Going to have the whole knee brace and everything? I'm not sure how he's going to roll with it. Oh, me? No, not you. Obviously oh. not you. Well, I think he had I think he had a bum knee in a league of their own too. That's fair. Yeah. So w- flashback to a little bit earlier in this episode. <laughs> you said you and your wife dressed up as Sandlot, right? Yeah. You said the characters, but did you tell everybody <laughs> which character you were or not? Because I didn't re- I can't recall, you know. We played, you know, a couple of days ago and everything's not clicking all the way. Can you remind me? <laughs> As to which character you were? Were you squints? No, you weren't squints. So, were you? so my wife and I decided, one, we thought that Sandlot was going to be a hit. And it was a hit for like five of our teammates and their wives, like Logan and Brandy, who obviously know the Sandlot. And they grew up around the same time we grew up. So my wife and I decided that we were going to be this iconic couple. Power couple. Power couple. Squints and Wendy Peppercorn. But we cross dressed, and I was Wendy in some sort of bathing suit, and my wife was squints, and she pulled off a good squint. She was she was amazing. the The part we didn't think of was as we're about to walk into y'all's house. I don't think I told you this. We're about to walk into the house, and Brie goes, "Oh my god, I'm gonna be meeting some of your teammates." For the first time tonight. <laughs> and then it hit me. I was going to be meeting wives for the first time. <laughs> yeah. And ex, yeah. Jared Norris was here. And he was just like, dude, I just thought somebody married, you know, some East European gal that was a power lifter over there. <laughs> just, just in some some weird bathing suit. Oh, so I'll tell you what, man. I will... I will make sure that a, t- a, a photo somehow gets to the hang time team here. And for this episode, we will. We'll I appreciate that. that, I appreciate that is, it. But I will say y'all pulled it off great. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I think uh, you guys gave us the best dress. Uh, yeah. Yep. We, we won. So it was all worth it. I had a killer wedgie, but it was all worth it. So, yeah. <laughs> all right, dude. So it was informed. It, it was informed to me. Is that the correct way to phrase that sentence? Works for me. I was informed yeah. that this Sunday was National Tight Ends Day. That's correct. From Kittle? Did he yeah. like commemorate this, this thing? This is George's thing, yeah. Yes. This is, this is his baby that he's been grooming for the last couple of years. I do think it is super cool the awareness or like the hype of the tight end position. Yeah, it kind of took off all of a sudden, huh? All of a sudden, dude. Yeah, I mean, 
one of the most disrespected positions in football. Uh, well, you guys are also, mine. you guys are also bigger. You guys are also bigger than most of the guys trying to cover you. Yeah. Or faster than a lot of the guys trying to cover you. It's yeah. like this really tough position to play defense again. And I think, you know, in the age. Don't forget smaller than the guys we got to block, though. Smaller than the guys yeah, you guys have to block. But we block them. You do block them. Yeah. yeah. That's it's a, a tough that's position. It's an underrated part of the game. We used to we used to always say that, like, I just feel like tight ends, like, I feel like every dad, their favorite position is tight end because it's just kind of like the man's man position. Gritty. You got to block. It's you got to catch. You know, like, have you noticed, by the way, that every time John Bates has had a catch, the person who tackles him stays down? Gets hurt, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how that happens. Because he's – I mean, you guys are all monsters, but, I mean, he's gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. And he he just knows how to throw his body around, too. Like, he's he's unreal strong. Like, yeah. his core strength, the way his hand – when his hands fit, nobody's getting off of that ball. Dude, like, he is. Un, yeah, insane. he's an animal. He's um, I saw you wearing a – I saw you wearing a shirt with the, the tied in thing with Kittle. What was that again? The – uh, so the, the, we do tight end university. Yes. Uh, it's down there in Nashville. This past year we had about 92 ish guys tight ends around the league. No other unit does that. No other. How many of our guys? Was that? Uh, it was just me and Cole this year. Okay. The year before it was uh, me and Bates, but trying to get most of the guys down there. Good time. Up here. It's a blast. Yeah. It's just really cool being around like-minded guys. Big time. Like guys that are going through the exact same thing. You yep. are guys that, you know, are in the same fight every single week. No like question. You are. Again, one of those positions that it's not the easiest position in the world. Yeah. You get put in precarious situations from time to time. Yeah. And uh but it's cool just to bounce those ideas off of each other and just yeah. chop it up and become friends with all these yeah. guys around the league. I know I know it all happens. I know it all happens fast. I know that there's a lot of emotions with it, a lot of ups and downs. I mean, dude, do you like how often how often does it hit you? Like you mentioned a little bit earlier in the show with special teams and things like that. How often does it hit you? of like your journey to like who you are now, how, how we view you in the locker room. One of the leaders of the team, veterans of the team starting tight end for a number of years of like, I remember watching you play quarterback for the Hokies. Yep. Getting, I think you told me and I'll let you tell the story, but like you told me you were drafted as a quarterback initially. Yeah. I mean, dude, like I understand you're still in your career and it's still going down, but like from the outside looking in, that is just, like the most adaptive athlete I've heard of in a while of like, okay, yeah. Boom, 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 boom. Like, honestly, I probably think about it once a month unless somebody brings it up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it was a crazy road. It really was. I played my first two and a half ish years at quarterback first year in Arizona, second year in Miami, uh, at the end of training camp, my third year, I got cut by the giants ended up being on the couch for like, 12 weeks or something like that. Really? I didn't know called. that part. Yeah, Detroit called. Wanted me to come in for a workout. Went in for the workout at quarterback. At the end of the workout, they said, hey, we want you to stay, run some routes. Okay, hold on. What year out of college was this? It had been my third year, so it had been 2014, 15. You played year two seasons. 2016. Two 2016. seasons, got cut, and spent 12 weeks on the couch. Correct. All right, I'm back in. Okay, so right after Thanksgiving, whatever that week is, 12-ish. Yeah. Right after Thanksgiving, I went up to Detroit for a workout, quarterback. At the end of the workout, they were like, hey, we just want you to do a couple drills, run some routes. Do you have any idea that was coming? No clue. Didn't okay. have gloves. Didn't really have cleats to run. I had my quarterback style cleats on. Yeah. Haven't ran a route in <laughs> five years in college, two, three years in the league. Yeah. I haven't done it, right? Yeah. And then Bob Quinn, the GM at the time, was like, hey, we want to bring you in. But not as a quarterback. I'm gonna bring you in as Shut a tight the front end door. and put you at practice squad. I was like, I'm tired of sitting on this couch. I was gonna man. say, so, yeah. So I'm in, and uh, so I went up there, walked in the building on Monday morning, got a workout in, and up there they practiced on Monday like a flush out practice after yeah. a game. Practiced, went to meetings, went home, woke up the next morning, went to meetings. My agent calls and said, "Go back to your hotel room." Went back to my hotel room and Buffalo picked me up active roster to play tight end. And then oh that's gosh. where the journey really began. Oh my So I was gosh. in Detroit for 36 hours and then went to Buffalo and then found my way back to Detroit. That is just, I did not know the, yeah. the fine details of that. Yep. 
Yeah. It was a uh, that week was nuts because yeah. I was in Ohio, so that's where my wife yep. grew up. I was in Ohio for Thanksgiving. Yeah. And then right then I flew to Detroit. She ended up driving back to Virginia, and then oh that whirlwind gosh, of a weekend. Man. Yep. That is just unbelievable. Definitely, you said once a month you think of it, just a little bit of gratitude, I assume, looking Absolutely. back of like, gosh, man, I got a call, go do a quarterback workout, and then they asked me to Turn into around. a now 10-year career where yeah. it was looking bleak there for a while. Yeah. And uh, just super thankful, uh, especially for Bob Quinn. Yeah. And then all the people that I had along the way, the tight end coaches, the people around me that were willing to help, the players yeah. that I had, and Charles yeah. Clay, Nick O'Leary, Jesse James. Like those guys who helped groom yeah. me to be the type of player. Charles Clay was Tulsa guy, right? He was. Yeah. Yeah. Freak. Yeah. He is so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That uh dude, I think and now we can have we can have a little dad talk here, both of us being popses, but I think it's some of those things. Obviously we're in our careers, we're in the middle of a season, lot lots of things go on and go through your head. That's some of that stuff that like if my if my kids, if our kids are serious about playing sports just some of the things that you'll be able to confident, confidently talk to them about of just when you're going through it. Yep. Cause like, for example, I knew that you were a quarterback and that you're our tight end now. And right. I knew there was a journey there. I had no idea about the 12 weeks on the couch. Yep. People don't know what that freaking couch feels like. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, and exactly. But like, it's just, you look back at those times of just being like, Oh my God, what, what's happening? Like, this is not going according to any plan no or plan B for that matter. This is no plan. Like what's happening. And then now, now you sit here on hang time and you're a tight end. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I couldn't imagine being anywhere else. Yeah. That, uh, speaking of being anywhere else, kind of home, Yeah. obviously not too far from your home, hometown. You guys are starting to set up business back near the hometown. Love being around here. Did you guys, once this really started turning into a career here in Washington, was that, for the sake of the argument, close to best case scenario? Like, man, how about this? Or, I would say, yeah. yeah. I mean, I pretty much wanted to come back here my whole career because close to family, close to yeah. home, close to my friends. Yeah. Uh, that was for me and my wife, really, my boys especially. Yeah. Uh, they got a bunch of friends all over the place. Yeah. We like we really like the area, Ashburn, Leesburg, uh, you know, the outer D.C. area. Uh, plenty to do, mm -hmm. good food, good people. Do you get spotted a lot? Pretty much everybody leaves me alone. If they do recognize me, they leave me alone. It's mainly when I go to my kids' games. That's okay. when people really point it out and yeah. come say stuff. But no, everybody's been really cool around here. Yeah. they. Uh, I'm a few of my neighbors are Hokies and uh, big Logan Thomas guys. <laughs> and they'll, always, they'll always say, hey, man, you know, it's great whenever cheese comes around, but what, why don't you see if Logan can pop by just say what's <laughs> Hey man, hokies oh, are everywhere, dude. Everywhere. everywhere, yeah. Everywhere. Good people too. Good people, man. Yeah. I will say, like, and I feel like they do the same. Like when the Sooners are on, and they they like pull for the Sooners. Yeah. But it is fun now. Like, I mean, I got buddies that are hokies. You got neighbors that are hokies. So if they're on, it's like, all right, come on, let's do the. Yeah. I'm not gonna try and do the sound because I think that that's like a thing. I'm not supposed to be able to do it if I didn't go there. Or am I making that up? I don't know. Okay. There you go. That's all right. I'm not saying I can or I cannot, but I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So mention, you mentioned going to the kids games. One of my favorite things is if I'm at like a, a game or something like that and people are talking football and they'd be like, Oh yeah, you play football. I was like, yeah, I'm the punter. And they're like, Oh man, you know, that's, that's what I should have done. <laughs> you know, like I played quarterback in high school. I played linebacker. I should have just punted. I could have been in the league. And every time I look at him, I go, you messed up. You should have. <laughs> you absolutely should have. Don't punish me because you weren't smart enough to go be a punter. When you are at Don't the, sell yourself short. I know. I'm just messing with them. There's good. no way they could have made it to the league as a punter. But <laughs> 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 I'm not gonna name any names. But you know, there's some guys that are like I could have freaking done. I'm like, you freaking could have, but you didn't. So I'm sorry. Don't yep. don't be pissed at me. Mm -hmm. When you when you are around the boys, their friends, I know that it spans in ages. He's freaking five deep over here with a bunch of dudes. Do, is there a number of the boys and their friends that like, they get it. They're like, Hey, my dad or my friend's dad's Logan Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say, especially for my older boys, they them and their friends get it. Yeah. My seven year old is finally like, Oh, okay. Now I get it. Like, yep. My dad plays for the commanders. That yep. is a NFL team. And there's not a whole bunch of those. <laughs> yes. right? Like he, He's starting to get that. 
obviously the four year old. Yeah. yeah, he's his own man. He's yeah. just rolling around all yeah. over the place. See, Bo's uh-huh. Bo's five, and he'll ask like his friends. He's like, "Hey, what team does your dad play for?" Yeah, and Bree, Bree will be like, "Buddy, that's that's not how it goes. You right. know, not everybody plays." Yeah, yeah. Like my my kid, older kids, friends, but they're all really respectful. Yeah, they love to call me Mister Thomas. I'm like, look, like I'm still young. You can call me Logan. My good for you. Mr. Thomas is my grandfather. <laughs> and so like they'll be like, hey, Mr. Thomas. I'm like, I'm not answering that. They're like, oh, what's going on, Logan? Yeah. Like, yeah. Right, what's going on, bud? See, good for you. I think I I think I stay a little on my high horse. They'll be like, Mr. Wade. I'd be like, you dead gum right. It is Mr. Wade. You call me Mr. Wade. <laughs> I appreciate the respect. Don't <laughs> yes. get me wrong. Yeah. I should take a more humble approach like you do. Like, hey, call me Tress. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right. So I was I was told by the uh by the team here to ask you about the T pose. Okay. Media day. Yep. Some sort of video game glitch. Yes. Strike the T-pose. So it's not so much a glitch as it is like when you're creating your player. Oh. They're in a T-pose, right? Like, yes. oh, I'm going to check out the what swag. the feet look like. Yep. What armbands you want to wear. Okay. What gloves you want to wear. That's what they do. And so I don't know how it came about in my house with what YouTube videos Who my knows kids were watching. Yes. Right? But my four-year-old always runs around just. Strike that T pose, <laughs> and so it's kind of a little ode homage to the to the little guys. I like it. I heard they were saying that they had the the camera on you, and I was wondering how far they had to pan backwards to reach the wingspan. <laughs> Hopefully, not too far. I bet it was pretty far. I mean, yeah, at least <laughs> six feet six inches wide for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I love having you on. Love chatting with you. A lot of people don't know that you and I chat a lot. A lot, yeah. I mean, maybe they would. Maybe they'd assume that. They're like, oh, it's two dads on the team. They've been around a while. Maybe they just chat. I mean, it's two like-minded guys. Yes. We've got our, we've got our heads on straight. We do, man. Yes. We, Humble. We know football's not everything. I mean, yeah. you know, there's family. There's our friendships. There's That's right. our faith. There's people around us that, you know, rely on us to show them love and, and right. vice versa. So That's right. I noticed, I noticed, you know, obviously like Bree and I got married and then the kids came around and like as your career progresses and then you just – have the things in your life that are, you know, you care very deeply about you approach the game differently and, and like, like better, like everything is just kind of more meaningful. Like everything is like, dude, if I'm sucking or I'm going through it, like I'll immediately think like, man, like there's one day, maybe I could be talking to the kids about this or what. I know that sounds funny, but it's like, I don't ever want to do anything mentally or physically, emotionally, or something like that, where I don't know, like I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense. No, it's I just know what you're like saying. it's always in the back of my mind. It's like, hey, there, there's somebody else watching other than our fans. Exactly. Yes. It's like you got to set the example inside yeah. of your house and for other kids or yeah. people watching that. You know, in this game, not everything's going to be perfect. That's not everything's right. Everything's going to go good all the time. They got good players. You're going to have your fair share of bad as well, That's and right. it's about how you react to it and. All the lessons that I've learned over my years of the roller coaster ride I've been on, the good and bad of every game. Yeah. It'd be something I can preach to my kids, yeah. especially now that they're in their sports. That, yeah. Hey, look, you're going to have bad games, but that next game, you're going to come out and be the person you want to be. Yeah. Because you're going to put in that work to make yourself better. And That's, you're going fl- to flush it down the toilet, the bad down the toilet. Amen, and, dude. And keep yeah. moving on to the good. Amen. Yeah. The times, t- times things haven't gone well. It's like, all right, I just want to get back out to practice and like get going again. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Very thankful for that. All right, dude. Well, I don't know if you remember, but, uh, how we finish the, uh, shows here, you're not going to be a fan of the name. It is three and out. Yep. And, um, but out's a good thing. You got one minute. I'll give you a question. Now, we've been doing a little differently. It used to just be three answers, and you got to get them all. Now I'm starting to mix it up. I'm starting to ask harder questions, but there's four or five answers, but you only have to get three of them. You get the three, you're out, you win. Does that make sense? Yeah, to everybody, it looks like I'm very smart. I get it. Three and out, one question. This one has four answers. Okay. One minute, you got to get three. You get three, you're out, you're out, you win, and you're subject to my current events going on in my life. Okay. Are you a show guy? It depends on the show. Are we you, watch we watch a decent amount of shows. Are you a documentary guy? We watch it all. Yeah, okay. We watch it all. I from my brother in law, he encouraged me to watch this documentary on Beckham. Okay. Haven't seen it yet, but it's in the queue. Loved it. Okay. All I knew about him was LA Galaxy and Posh Spice when we were kids. Yes. I didn't know how good he was. I didn't know his story. Great, great documentary. Okay. So 
you are subject to my current events, which my three and out question is, what are the four words that make up the acronym FIFA for the oh, FIFA World Cup? No. You have you have one minute. You only got to get three of them. There's two Fs, one so I. Football is one of them. Bam. International. International. Yes. Okay. Association. Wow. That was quick. A, I'm assuming. That was it. Can you get the first one? The first one's super hard. Well done, man. I looked this up and I'm like, oh, all right. That's crazy. <laughs> hmm. It's not future. It can't be that. That'd be cool, though. That would be cool. Future in a, in a, So I have 20 seconds? Uh, yeah, but you, I mean, you're playing with house money right now. That's true. I would rather a dollar than 75 cents, though. Matt checks out. No, I got nothing. Federation. Oh, come on, Logan. You got to do better. Than but that. it's interesting because it doesn't Federation make sense. Federation in International Football Association? So I was about to say, it doesn't make sense in English, but it's like. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, they do it. See, like, Logan. I know. We complicate it, man. That's all. Yep. But anyways. I'll take three out of four, I guess. No question. You should uh, You should check out that come out. I'm going to. Yeah, I'll put in a few. Maybe, maybe i got some time this afternoon. Yep. Also, too, for those watching, listening, we'll make sure that there's a couple of those pictures and videos. But I, once again, I just highly, highly encourage everybody to listen to this episode. Even if you watch it, just double it back and just listen. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, man. If Even if I hate it, my voice. Y'all can, y'all can like it, but if I hate my voice. <laughs> but I feel like that's standard. Does everybody hate their voice? Yeah, kind of. You hear yourself. Like, I, I, like when I watch Hangtime, I'm like, golly, man. Like, yeah. What the heck? I think your voice is great. Thank you. I think you're built to host a podcast. I just feel like I'm always stuffed up. My wife looks at me like I'm crazy because I sleep with my mouth open. She's like, why are you a mouth sleeper? And I'm like, because I can't breathe through my freaking nose. <laughs> Anyways. I mean, I don't know if I breathe through my mouth or nose, but I do know that I, my wife's hearing some snoring. <laughs> Either way. Sawing logs, man. No question. Yeah. Once I go out, there's no telling what's going to happen. <laughs> well, dude, thank you for coming back on the hang time. I always love chatting with you, but chatting with you when you're on the extra long couch, just as fun, my friend. Well, I appreciate you having me. You know, I'm I'm here to help anytime you'd like. My man. You know, maybe one day we'll do this a little, a little more often. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go take care of Philly. Let's do it.